Rishi Sunak's government are in huge trouble with their own Tory MPs over the Brexit U-turn, as this week government ministers are being grilled by the European Scrutiny Committee and it's getting a little bit ugly. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel that challenges the mainstream media and the political establishment from the left-wing nutters to the globalist elite. All right, as uh, we told you guys a few days ago, this week is huge in uh, the House of Commons. We've got the European Scrutiny Committee uh, grilling Kemi Badenoch and uh, others uh, from Rishi Sunak's government because they made a U-turn on their promise and their main pledge to remove thousands of EU laws from our statute books. So we have this battle. I'm going to show you a clip uh, from yesterday, uh, the European Scrutiny Committee. You've got uh, David Jones and other Brexit here MPs who decided to ask some questions from uh, Kemi Badenoch uh, because Rishi Sunak is using Kemi Badenoch as the scapegoat. She, she's basically been thrown under the bus uh, to get all the blame, but she's not really helping herself. She's trying to spin the message. Basically, they're making announcements without telling the MPs. And that happens quite often in, when it comes to this government. And this battle is about that. So David Jones is going to ask um, Kemi Badenoch why you she, and, and the government disrespect uh, the House of Commons. And she's basically going to say, well, if things are changing when the when the bill is in, is in the House of Lords, we don't really need to tell you. And it got a little bit ugly when it, come to, when it came to the conversation about private meetings, which got leaked to the Telegraph passes through the House of Commons unamended and therefore clearly has the complete approbation of the House of Commons, you then change your approach completely. Mm. You don't tell the Commons that you're changing your approach. You don't have the courtesy to come before this committee so that this committee can scrutinise the changes that you're proposing. Mm. And then you come back to the Commons, it having gone through the Lords, presenting the Commons effectively with a fait accompli. Don't you think that's disrespectful of the House of Commons? Well, so that, that's why they're frustrated at Brexit here and peace, mainly because you, you've already went through the whole thing. And they say when the bill got to the House of Lords, the House of Lords with their amendments are making things difficult, so we're going to make changes. So the government decided to make changes on their own, and then basically the U-turn. And then they brought back the bill to the Commons, saying, well, this is the new bill. Well, you can't really, because the Commons... The House of Commons, the MPs, already voted for the first version, the promise to remove and amend the EU laws. And, and without telling the MPs, you're basically saying, well, the bill has completely changed. You don't even have to vote on it. It's, everything's fine. This is why now Kim Vatanog is trying to spin the message saying, well, it was in the House of Lords, we don't have to tell you. First of all, I would dispute several of the things that you have said. This was a Lords Amendment, so the change we would have had to make would always have been in the Lords. We rarely, if ever, we rarely, if ever, give statements on changes to um, in the Lords. Like I said, I don't believe this is a policy change. We are still delivering the bill's intent. Secondly, the first time I was asked to attend this committee, I'd just been appointed. I didn't know anything about the bill. What would have been the point of me coming here to say, I don't know, I'm not sure yet? I wanted to make sure that I understood what I would be talking about before I sat in front of the committee. And at each time I was asked, two or three times I said, I would come in front of the committee as soon as we could find a mutually convenient time. You know that as International Trade Secretary, I'm often not in the country, so of course that made things difficult. But also, something you're not saying is that we had private meetings, David. We had private meetings where we discussed we this extensively because I knew you had concerns. And it's public knowledge that we had private meetings because when I thought I was having private and confidential meetings, I was reading the contents in the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> so with respect, I would like to dispute quite a lot of what you have said. But secondly, you are saying that the Commons voted for this yep. without um, any dispute and the Lords changed it. This is parliamentary process. One, this is not the Lords who changed it, but the Lords did support the change that I made to the schedule. And the reason why I made the change to the schedule is because I could see that the intent of the bill was not what was happening. What is the point of us as MPs voting through legislation, which is not doing what we wanted to do, just so we can say, well, we passed this legislation? Our job is to deliver for the people of this country. And what the people of the country want is right. reform that makes their lives better, not just saying we've deleted things from the statute book. Okay. So, firstly, she said, 
well, when the bill is in the House of Lords and it changes in the House of Lords, and we don't, you know, that's different. It's a process. We don't have to update the comments until it gets back to the comments. And then she said, she admitted, well, the House of Lords didn't change it. We changed it because why? Because we had a feeling the House of Lords would be difficult. So we changed it in, in the first place and the law supported the changes. So you already that your, your first comment is completely irrelevant now because the House of Lords didn't change it. You changed it. So you have to then announce it. You have to completely discuss it uh, with uh, the MPs who originally voted for the first version. You can't, <laughs> it, you're bypassing the House of Commons. It makes no sense. You cannot empower the, the House of Lords. You're encouraging bad behavior. So you're basically saying every single time there's a bill that the House of Lords could frustrate, the government could cave in, the government could make the changes before the House of Lords even force the changes. And the House of Commons and the MPs should just shut up, just accept it. Now, this is a sad thing because Rishi Sunak is using Kemi Badenov and then she's going to be destroying her future career over this because she's not taking the logical side and the side of the Brexit here and people who are concerned about these changes. It makes no sense right now what's going on. Um, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good for Kemi and the ministers in general. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.